What? I'm actually reviewing Samurai 8 and I'm doing it on time? Wow. Uh, so I guess this is technically my first real review of this series. Um, with that being said, I did make a video last week? I did make a video where I kind of gave my general thoughts after having read the first six chapters. So make sure to go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description, maybe put a card somewhere in the video. Anyways, I have now read chapter 7 and I am really hyped for this series. So, since I'm coming into this a little late as far as reviewing individual chapters and there's a lot to cover, I'm not going to cover it at all. I'm just going to focus on this chapter and we'll move on from here. Like I said, I have another video where I kind of give my very brief thoughts, I guess, whatever. It turned out to be a longer video than I thought it would. Anyways, let's move on. This chapter was pretty cool. I enjoyed much of it. Uh, my first takeaway is that Hachimaru is kind of an asshole. You got this kid. He is crippled. He eventually becomes the samurai that he wanted to be all this time. He even gets a master to help him learn the ways of, of, uh, whatever. Kendo, whatever. It's the Yasha style that Daruma teaches. And he's just being a dickhead. Daruma's trying to drop some major knowledge on him and not even saying it in like these like complex things. Like it's pretty straightforward now at this point. And Hachimaru is just not listening to him. He's so stuck in his own head. And I don't know. I like Hachimaru, but he needs to chill the frig out. So that's what's going on with him. He's the kind of like putzing through his training or, or right at the beginning just about to train and he's kind of putzing around. We then leave them and we go back to uh, the, the samurai that we kind of live in the uh, Yasha style dojo, which I'm going to think about that for a moment uh, once I get to that point. Uh, but we, we got like kind of this like cool dude. His name is Hagamichi and he's just a real chill dude. I think he's like maybe not the leader per se, but he's like kind of higher up in this in this dojo area or in this town and him and another guy are investigating the tank that Hachimaru is slashing in half and they're just like yo we gotta figure out what to do about this uh supposedly it's a samurai kid named Hachimaru what are we gonna do and Hagamichi's like I'm gonna go ask Princess Un she probably knows or she can ask somebody who knows whatever we're gonna find this out so he goes and asks Princess Un, and she's kind of like, she's funny in a sense because she like puts on airs about how she's like, oh, like proper and whatever. But when we first see her, she's eating like mochi balls and like all kind of stuff. And she's just kind of really like putzing around and just watching like TV or something. And once Hagamichi shows up, then she's like, oh, wait, bring me my flowers, my arrangement flowers, my Ikebana stuff. I got to do this. I got to look proper for him. And honestly, I really like the two of them. Um... Clearly, Hagamichi's kind of a straight-laced dude. He's probably devoted to Princess Un that it says princess. And then you got her who's like, she she kind of breaks character to yell at people or act like a schmuck. So it's kind of funny, their dynamic. I, I especially like Hagamichi. I think he's a real chill dude. And I think he'll be a really cool character to have in this series. In any event, Princess Un doesn't know. So she contacts Princess Sa who we saw earlier in another chapter, and she's basically like one of the higher-ups or whatever of this. I, I guess it's an organization of princesses and samurais or whatever, which makes me think, uh, I, I, how organized is the whole samurai, princess, sword, whatever, the whole setup? Is there like, I don't know, I don't know. So they're chatting, and Princess Sa and her samurai guy are like, yeah, we know about Hajimaru. He's he's the guy. He's probably the guy that picked up Princess in training uh, An's uh, locker ball. So that's probably what it is. And clearly, Princess Moon does not know what's going on with that. Because either, well, either one, she knew, but she didn't say anything. Or two, she doesn't have a great uh, grasp on what's going on in her, like, training area. So, ooh. In any event, I wonder, so it seems like they have a pretty decent, uh, like, kind of, again, it's an organization or something like that, where things are a bit more like, oh, well, they have princesses, and then they lo they they match them up with people that they think would make good samurai and whatever, traditionally anyways. So I'm wondering if, if Daruma was ever part of that, and maybe he's not, like, down with them anymore. Like, not necessarily a ronin, but, like, maybe he's, like... I don't know, maybe he is a ronin, and it's just like, whatever, he's clearly a Yasha-style user, and, and I get the feeling that he's like the true leader of the Yasha-style uh, dojo, or whatever, but then you got Hagamaru, but then you got Hagamichi, who is like, kind of more head, uh, more of a higher up in that 
uh, zone and kind of leading like the pursuit of what was going on around them. So I don't know. I think there's probably a rough relationship between Daruma and the organization of samurai and princesses or whatever. Moving on, we got to see more of Princess An or Princess in Training An, and she is great. I like her a lot. Uh, we we meet her in Ikebana class, which again is flower arrangement. If you don't know Ikebana, um, and she, you got you got like the teacher being like, yes, that's proper, and like going through all the student stuff, and they're all like kind of. Pretty traditional Ikebana stuff. Uh, some little, like, flourishes here and there. Nothing crazy. And then you get to Anz, and she's basically made, like, a like an Oni face out of flowers and whatnot. So it's, like, really funny and jarring. And, like, the, pr the, the teacher is like, yeah, oh, wait, no, that's wrong. An is then taken out of class to meet up with Princess Un and uh, Hagamichi. And Hagamichi and her are going to go on a little quest to find whoever took her locker ball. Or took her locker ball, absorbed her locker ball. Because clearly they don't have, they know that he exists, but they don't have a firm grasp as to who he is exactly. He could be an enemy, he could be a potential friend, whatnot. Uh, but we don't know for sure uh, what their relationship is going to be. So they go on a quest, they're trying to figure stuff out, and we jump back to Hachimaru trying to train with uh, Daruma, and he's got his sword out, but his sword is now bending into his head, and I was a little confused at first, yeah, until I swept the page, and he, his sword was going through his head, he's a cyborg, so it's not really gonna kill him or anything, and it's his sword anyways, but like, it's it's some good, kind of like, I guess it would be slapstick comedy. It was a good little blurb. Also, he's still being a dickhead, so it's like, come on now. He eventually drops the sword training because he just cannot wait uh, or, or be patient with this whole thing. And he's like, okay, well, I'll move on to getting my armor on. And so he starts absorbing it, but it's like armor that doesn't fit him, and it's too big for his body, and he gets smushed underneath. It's, he, he needs to learn some patience. As all of this is happening, Hagamichi and An show up, and Daruma very reasonably starts to, like, go for a sword, and he's, like, a little worried about this, and he re he recognizes uh, Hagamichi after he introduces himself, and kind of does this weird thing where he, like, identifies Hagamichi, and that's, like, presumably that's, like, him memorizing Oh, this person is Hagamichi, the Black Wolf of the Yasha Kongo style dojo, whatever it's called. Uh, so he memorizes him in kind of a computer voice thing. As they're kind of quelling each other and being like, hey, we're not necessarily here for a fight. We're just looking for Hachimaru, whoever that is. Uh, Hachimaru comes out and he and An come face to face finally. And in pure, like, it's very typical of him. Hachimaru says, hey, who are you? And she is pretty quiet and, like, just kind of, like, a little nervous. And she tra starts trying to introduce herself, but she's stuttering through her words. And he cuts her off and is like, hey, tell me who you are. He is such a jerk. I don't know. Like, that's the one thing. So, like, when Naruto first started, he kept saying Databayo or Believe It in the English dub of the anime. And I didn't care for that. And I'm glad that they dropped it eventually. This personality trait for Hachimaru, I really hope he drops soon because he's kind of a cool character but i feel like he's gone from oh he understands what it's like to be trapped in a cage and now he's free and maybe he should have some kind of perspective on it but instead he's just a jerk so i hope they clean that up also i am surprised that him and on are meeting this early on i guess it's the kind of thing where they probably won't be with each other for very long in this scenario uh but it's definitely very early on for me that I, I didn't expect them to come face to face. Especially since Hachimaru just learned about all this anyway, so it's like, like, does he really need to meet her yet? In any event, the chapter ends with a huge cliffhanger with, you got some, like, some, some like, close-ups of a mouth, and he's like, oh, we finally found the eighth uh, child, I think they call him. Uh, what are we gonna do about him? Do you want me to bring him back? And yeah, and... Bad guys, ahoy. Uh, so we got this cool looking, like, I guess samurai uh, guy and another guy that looks kind of funky. And presumably it's the samurai guy who's going out to, who's going to go out and get Hachimaru dead or alive, mind you. And he's got a, he's got like a dragon holder. And that's really, really cool. I am super pumped for this. The bad guys look super freaking cool. I'm pumped. Overall, I really enjoyed this chapter. I found way more enjoyment out of An and her shenanigans and her, like, 
Ikebana, like, Oni dragon looking thing uh, over Hajimaro being an idiot and a jerk. Uh, but I'm, I'm really, really excited to see where things go, especially with the bad guys kind of finally coming into play. Because up until this point, we weren't really sure, like, oh, well, is the organization bad? Or, again, I keep calling it an organization, but that's only because I don't have a firm grasp of her what's going on with them. Um, but it, we, we're finally getting a firm grasp of like, oh, here are basically the villains, at least for this arc. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought down below in the comment section. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. So that way you'll get all notifications when I upload. I will see you guys in another video. See you later.